And in our cover story, former NFL linebacker Roman Pfeiffer, now a documentarian, working for the cause of fellow retirees getting better benefits. If Gene Upshaw saw this film, I would hope that he would be moved to want to do something positive. This film is challenging him to do more. It's all ahead on Inside the NFL. One of the biggest stories of the past year in the NFL has been pension and disability benefits for retired players, and many of those retirees claiming that the Players Association's support has been inadequate. NFLPA Executive Director Gene Upshaw and Commissioner Roger Goodell have outlined several steps the two sides are taking to address concerns, but still, the outcry remains strong. Last week, Chiefs lineman Kyle Turley challenged active NFL players to follow his lead in donating a game check to a fund for retired players. And in this week's cover story, we look at another effort to help NFL retirees. I want to start seeing guys who go through the process and come out and say the NFL Players Associated treated me fairly. I had a good experience with them because I haven't met that guy yet. They would be very, very disappointed in what you're doing. This stuff's got to stop. Over a dozen former NFL stars are the headliners of an upcoming documentary that passionately and aggressively takes on the NFL Players Association and its director, Gene Upshaw, over the issues of pension and disability benefits for retired NFL players. But blood equity isn't the work of a well-known filmmaker or documentarian. I would describe myself as a retired football player that's, you know, making a film. People need to hear about issues like disability, issues like pension, to know what guys really go through outside of football. Roman Pfeiffer was a hyperkinetic linebacker for 15 seasons in the NFL. Drafted by the Rams in 1991, he was a leader everywhere he played, including New England, where he helped the Patriots win three Super Bowls. What a hit by Roman Pfeiffer. I wasn't a superstar, I wasn't a big name, but I was a solid player and I had the respect of my peers. When he retired in 2006 at age 38, Pfeiffer was healthy and financially secure. His plan was to spend time with his wife and kids and pursue a real estate career in the Los Angeles area. So how did he end up creating a documentary on the plight of retired NFL players? It all started this past February when an old Rams teammate suggested Pfeiffer attend a local retired players meeting. I'm thinking that's for older guys. And I was like, what do they do? He's like, I don't know, I've never been to one. I walked in this meeting and man, I was blown away. What blew Pfeiffer away were the stories of retirees from the 60s, 70s, and 80s. Men who were now going through knee and hip replacements, complicated surgeries, sometimes even dementia. But Pfeiffer was truly surprised by the complaints he heard from retired players, many of whom felt that the NFLPA refused to help them get higher pensions and more long-term disability benefits. One player's voice stood out. He said, you know what, we can't just sit back and wait on the NFLPA. We have to step up if we want things to change. And I thought, I'm a guy who's benefited. I should do something to try to give back. But what? Some retired players had gone public with their complaints. Others even went to Congress. Pfeiffer wanted to do something different. During workouts, he brainstormed with his friend and trainer, Rico McClinton. We talked about it, and he said, hey, man, let's do something, man, you know. Let's try to make some, some difference for these guys. First, we visualized, you know, let's do a reality TV segment. You know, reality TV's big. And then I thought, there's no films on retired NFL players. That's where the idea of this documentary came about. As a way to put a collaboration of stories together and, you know, maybe make a platform that could have more of an impact. We said, let's just go for it. We, we never made a film before, none of us. I didn't have any idea where to start. You know, I, I'm not a Bob Costas or anything. I can't, you know, I don't know how to interview. I've never interviewed people. Yeah. Roman and Rico's first step was to put together financing for the project. Then they had to assemble a young and relatively inexpensive production crew. A big hurdle was convincing retired players to participate. Fortunately, being an NFL alum himself, helped Pfeiffer open doors. There's always a, a bond between players, whether they played in your era or not. It's like a brotherhood. And sometimes they were just in the right place at the right time, like in the case of Hall of Fame running back Tony Dorsett. We didn't even plan to interview him. We went to interview Mel Renfro, and we were hanging out in his office, and then Tony Dorsett just happens to walk by. The thing is this, Gene, he's got players that he, he played with that are suffering. 
you got to somehow, Gene, make the rhetoric be trying to say, well, we're going to try to do something. If it ain't just for everybody else that plays it, how about your own compadres? Now, after interviewing over a dozen other ex-NFL players, Pfeiffer and his team are sifting through hours of material. As relative amateurs, they admit it's not easy. Now that's strong right there. That's Instead of editing blood equity in a glamorous Hollywood okay. studio, they work in the bedroom of a modest apartment. Just this whole sequence, you think we could just chop it up? You know, we want to get to the meat of it. While there are pointed remarks and emotional attacks from Hall of Famers like Joe DeLamalier. Upshaw hasn't had a bloody nose in his whole career. Give him a month with some of the things that our guys have had to go through. Then tell me what you think. The most touching interview is with former Colt tight end John Mackey, one of the NFL's all-time greats who now suffers from dementia. The heartbreaking scene reveals that Mackey doesn't recognize a photo of his own children. You remember these little kids? Who are they? They're our kids. Kevin? Yeah, that's Kevin. Who's that? I think John's a great example why the like? NFL union should be doing more. I worry if dementia is going to happen to me. I mean, I played linebacker for 15 years in this league. You know, if anybody sees this film, including current players, they're going to, you know, have some thoughts about that too. Pfeiffer doesn't hide his agenda. He doesn't include the NFL or NFLPA's points of view in blood equity. Pfeiffer thinks they've had plenty of opportunity to speak for themselves. He says he wants his film to increase awareness of the plight of retired players and inspire change in the game he still loves. My experience in filmmaking is, is zero. <laughs> but this is something from my heart. If Gene Upshaw saw this, I would hope that he would be moved to want to do something positive. This film is challenging him to do more. Obviously, if Gene Upshaw had his say, and he has at different times, he would point out that benefits have been increased across the board, and they continue to work on it. The league increased their contribution by some $10 million this year. Others might argue that it's not enough. There are aspects of this story, not all of which are covered in Roman Pfeiffer's film, and he doesn't contend that they are. He's presenting a point of view, presenting it passionately. Chris right, Carter. But one thing that, that people should understand that uh, the Player Association, Roger Goodell, the NFL office, they are working together. They realize that there is um, a problem with the, with the current system, and they're doing everything they can to change it. They established the Alliance Group, which was, um, was founded in May, and we will start to see, in the next six months or so, we will start to see this Alliance Group. It has a collection of people from the gridiron greats, the, the past alumni, Everyone that's always mentioned, Joe DeLamalure, all these people have been invited to these meetings, which they meet every other month. They have partnered with 16 hospitals around the United States, so it allows former players to get replacements, knees, hips, and shoulders, all replaced at no cost. So their overall health of the players is the first thing that they're addressing, and they're trying to get this done, and we shall start to see um, stories, success stories in the next six months. Here's the one thing that you could say, regardless of where you point the finger of blame, regardless of what you think the particular solutions and approaches should be, any fair-minded person can't possibly sit there and say, this is right. Guys who literally gave their bodies, their hearts and soul to the game, a brutal and dangerous game, no matter how great a game it is, you can't leave them in these circumstances. And that's absolutely right. And, and what Roman Pfeiffer is doing is great because it's bringing awareness, awareness to the situation. And maybe it's not perfect right now, but someday it's got to be because there is no excuse in the world that older players that have had these problems and are hurting in so many ways should not be taken care of. And over time, I'm sure it'll happen, but it will. You know, you, you look at it, and I think it's important to point out that, A, the problem's not solved. Certainly, they're making steps. Yes. So we don't want anybody to believe right. that the mm -hmm. problem's solved oh, no. here. But the next collective bargaining agreement's going to tell a lot. I, I went on two strikes personally. Uh, at the time, I had the right to negotiate with one football team. And you want to talk about a tough negotiation with Mike Brown only? That's tough. So we fought for free agency. We fought for things that they take for granted now. Now it's time for this young group of players and athletes out there to do the right thing. We felt like we were doing the right thing. It cost us money at the time. Now it's time for them to do the right thing and make these changes. And this awareness is going to help. And something else that would help, financial contributions and negotiations aside, if a handful of superstar players, active superstar players, stepped up and said, hey, we understand, we're concerned, we're behind this, that would help a lot too. Ray Lewis could get a lot done. Yeah, not just yeah. Ray Lewis, but a lot but of them. But he's the kind of guy they would follow.